Good morning, students. Uh, welcome to psychology lecture. How are you all doing? Fine, ma'am. Fine, ma'am. Okay. Um, and how's the lockdown treating you? Everything's fine around? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma okay that's very nice so today we will be starting with the chapter number five that is therapeutic approaches okay so to give you an overview firstly i'm going to show you a ppt related to that and we are going to have a basic overview of therapeutic approaches and after that we will be going according to the ncrt let me share the screen with you There are, there are two major types of therapy for treating mental disorders. Biomedical therapy is the use of medical interventions, most often prescription medication. Psychotherapy has been found to be just as effective and involves a mental health professional who is trained in the therapeutic approaches in psychology. The basic thing that what a therapeutic approach or what psychotherapy means okay it involves a mental health professional that can be a psychologist a therapist a counselor or a psychiatrist who is trained in the therapeutic approaches in psychology what does the word therapeutic means something related to medicine so, uh, the symptoms of a particular disorder gets reduced those are uh, for that we use the word therapeutic approaches Let's move forward. This is psychology. Often both work in harmony with the psychiatrist and psychotherapist, collaborating to create the best treatment for the patient. Psychotherapy, known more commonly as talk therapy or counseling, has very high success rates when paired with biomedical therapy. All states have licensing regulations for psychotherapists. Okay, so now as they are talking about uh, the license, uh, so just a question about uh, the general knowledge. Anyone of you who is acquainted with the body? The Indian body which licensed the clinical psychologist? No, ma'am. No, okay. So in India, the body is called RCI, that is the rehab. Council of India. So they give you the license for it for the clinical psychology. Clinical psychologists and counseling psychologists have done extensive postgraduate study in the therapeutic approaches to treating mental disorders. These mental health counselors may have certain areas of expertise, but all are aware of the therapeutic approaches discussed in this lesson and which situations they work best in. Psychoanalysis is the therapeutic approach that was originally developed by Sigmund. Okay, so now this is one of the psychotherapy that is psychoanalysis. Uh, this was developed by Sigmund Freud. Uh, this is something like beyond the introduction. So we will be doing this once we will be done with our introduction. So now I will be sharing the screen so that we can start with the chapter. On my screen, you can see the NCRT. Okay, so initially, like what topics are going to cover today? Therapeutic approaches, we are going to know about the therapeutic relationship. What is a therapeutic relationship? That is the relationship between the therapist and his client. Mm -hmm. Then the type of therapies that we all are going to do, psychodynamic therapy, behavior therapy, cognitive therapy, humanistic existential therapy, biomedical therapy, and the alternative therapies. Okay, so these are the topics that we are going to cover in this chapter. And after completion of this chapter, you will be very well familiar uh, with the basic nature and the process of the psychotherapy and uh, the various therapies that you can use or when you will be a psychologist you can be used for helping people and also you will understand the use of the psychological forms of intervention and uh, know that how the individual who's having a particular mental disorder can be rehabilitated okay so starting with the chapter the nature and the process of psychotherapy uh, 
what psychotherapy is you can underline the first three lines which gives you the definition of psychotherapy it is a voluntary relationship between the one seeking treatment or the client and the one who treats or the therapist okay so as you know that when we are giving a psychotherapy to an individual we need a therapist as well as the one who wants that particular therapy okay there needs to be a demand for a particular service so psychotherapy is one of a volunt uh, voluntary service where the client wants to seek the service and the therapist wants to give the help okay so psychotherapy is a voluntary relationship where both of them want each other the therapist want to give the help and the client want to receive the help now what is the purpose of this relationship so you can read in the next line the purpose of the relationship is to help the client to solve the psychological problems being faced by her or him so now during the therapeutic uh, relationship the purpose is to help to solve problem not to solve the problem of the client the duty or the work of a particular therapist or the psychologist is to help the individual help his client to solve the problem not to solve the problem of his client for example if an individual is having the anger issues okay so now the therapist is going to help him to control that particular anger issue he is going to talk to the client about his feelings that why these things are happening what he can do about it but he won't be telling him that okay this is your problem this is the solution no that that is not the duty of the psychologist but that is the duty of the client to figure out with the help of the psychologist to solve the problem the relationship is conducted for building the trust of the client so that problems may be freely discussed psychotherapies aim at changing the maladaptive behaviors decreasing the sense of personal distress and helping the client to adapt back better to her or his environment inadequate merit marital occupational and social adjustment also requires that major changes can be made in an individual's personal environment okay all psychotherapeutic approaches have the following characteristics now by now we have done that what is therapeutic approach what is the therapeutic relationship and what things we discuss or what is the purpose of the therapeutic relationship if you are clear with these three topics that is the nature the purpose and the relationship the therapeutic relationship quickly put pt in the chat box quickly write pt in chat box if you are clear with psychotherapy okay ishita kyati nishtha chaitri himanshi vishakha lakshita very good that's perfect now let's move to the characteristics of psychotherapy what are the characteristics of this particular therapeutic approaches there is systematic application of principles underlying the different theories of therapy every theory has its own principle we all are aware about it so we follow these particular principles the application of these principle in a systematic way okay that is the first characteristic second the person who have received practical training under expert supervision can practice psychotherapy and not everybody an untrained person may unintentionally cause more harm than any good so second characteristic is something that we have discussed a lot of times that why is it necessary that the untrained person should not be getting into psychotherapy so service which need to be given by the practitioners or the one who is having a very good experience in this field not any one can get into this particular therapy and okay let me counsel you this is not possible or can any one of you tell me that why is it necessary to have a trained personnel for the psychotherapy any one among you why is it necessary to have a trained or a expert for the psychotherapy why anyone can't counsel the client why we need someone to be very expert in this ma'am can i yes uh, shaitri ma'am if um, 
one there is one untrained psychologist who is uh, having a very uh, rude personality then uh, when he is talking with the client maybe he can he or she can hurt the client and so there will be a mistrust among means between them okay that is one thing okay khaki you wanted to say something so ma'am if we go to an untrained client untrained counselor so it may be possible that he or she can harm the client cause they don't know properly how to uh, handle the situation okay very good uh, so related to that what are the characteristics of a trained psychologist can any one of you acquaint me with the same that what are the characteristics of a trained psychologist ma'am a trained psychologist yes. knows oh. how to uh, build trust knows how to analyze a person knows how to um, you know mold things in a way while he or she is speaking that the other person won't i like won't even get hurt and will understand the concept that they are presenting Very and nice. uh, it would also help the like problem that the client or the patient is having that would be easily able to like the person would be able to overcome it very nice uh, when a psychologist is trained or the personnel who is trained under psychotherapy that individual is very well acquainted that how to handle a case okay vishaka has they have problem solving ability yes exactly they can help the client in a better way to solve his problem to solve his disorder and also he knows that how to read the body language how to communicate with the client okay so that's why we need the practitioner or the psychotherapist to be a trained person the therapeutic solution situation involves a therapist and a client who seeks and receives help for her or his emotional problem this person is the focus of the attention in the therapeutic process and the interaction of these two person that is the therapist and the client results in the consolidation or the formation of the therapeutic relationship this is a confidential interpersonal and dynamic relationship this human relationship is central to any sort of psychological therapy and is the vehicle for changes we all are very well acquainted that there needs to be a trust between the psychotherapist as well as the client you know when the client is sharing his personal details with a person so he is expecting that his therapist will be keeping it very confidential and will not be judging the individual right because when the individual knows that okay i am being judged on this particular thing he or she won't be able to give the answers or the response in a very open way okay so it is necessary that they both share a very confidential relationship if you are clear with this quickly put put ct in the chat box characteristics of psychotherapy quickly put ct in chat box if you are clear with the characteristics of this okay nishtha ishita khyati shaitri vishakha lakshita gitika okay perfect very good asif okay so now uh, let's move to the goals of psychotherapy what are the goals of psychotherapy so the first goal that is mentioned in ncrt is reinforcing clients resolve for betterment what is the goal that the situation of the client gets better second lessening the emotional pressure obviously the client has approached a psychotherapist that means that he is very much pressurized emotionally so it is necessary the goal of the psychotherapy uh, it aims to lessen that emotional pressure and make the individual the client calm unfolding the potential for positive growth yes the important goal that the psychotherapy aims to unfold the potential for positive growth as we have discussed in the beginning the duty of a psychotherapist or a psychologist is to help the your uh, client to solve the problem they help to solve the problem so here what they are doing they are unfolding the potential the potential is already existing in the client they are only helping him to discover that potential for the positive growth fourth modifying habits fifth changing thinking patterns 
that how the person is thinking a lot of time it is possible that the client which is approaching the psychologist for the counseling that individual is you know thinking in a negative way so now it is the uh, service by the psychotherapist that without judging the person or without you know influencing that person he or she need to change the thinking patterns and need to modify his habits okay for example if the person is coming with the uh, anger issues so it is the duty of the th psychotherapist to ask the person that if you are angry you can just count till 10 to calm yourself down and then you can think about the problem and then you can act accordingly okay increasing self-awareness okay what do you think that what is the necessity of the self-awareness in this why is it necessary that client should be uh, self-aware mom being self-aware would like help a person to discover themselves to know what uh, like what is troubling them and what are their capabilities and the areas of improvement so they can work on it so they can talk to their therapist about it very nice that's exactly perfect so are you aware Achha, how many of you not, like what what was the story of bhagavad gita bhagavad gita any one of you like you all are acquainted i hope with bhagavad gita that what was bhagavad gita yes, all about quickly give a yes in the chat box if you know what bhagavad gita was all about okay shaitri nishtha okay lakshata Gitika. the responses are coming slow ishita okay so what happened in bhagavad gita it's just an example so it was the tale about uh, arjun and krishna in the battlefield where arjun was confused that should i be you know having war with my relatives that is the core of uh, and in that uh, the opposition party involves my includes my guru includes my brothers includes my very beloved ones so should i be you know having a war with them because even after winning that war i'm not going to have that particular happiness of winning that war so what should i be doing okay so in this particular situation the uh, krishna lord krishna was the counselor for arjun and the main thing that he focused in bhagavad gita was about the karma self awareness and bhakti okay so here even in the bhagavad gita they have talked about the self awareness that once you are aware about your needs about your negatives about your positives your life will be way more sorted and in the whole bhagavad gita scene what happened the lord krishna he counseled arjun related to the same that create self-awareness before knowing the world you must be aware about yourself without talking uh, before talking about the world you should be very well aware about yourself so it is same thing uh, during the psychotherapy and the psychotherapy as well it is the duty of the therapist to you know uh, motivate his client about the self-awareness to know about his positive to know about his negative to know about himself next is improving interpersonal relationships and communication to improve the relationship the individual the client shares with his society with his friends that is about the different goals that we are going to study next facilitating decision making again you can see a very good emphasis on the facilitating decision making you are not going to make decision for your client but a psychotherapist will facilitate in his decision making Becoming aware of one's choices in life, again, something related to self-awareness. Relating to one's social environment in a more creative and a self-aware manner. Again, something related to self-awareness, that how much aware you are about your environment, about the people you are talking to, about yourself in the psychological way. Next, let's read about a basic about therapeutic relationship and then we are going to wrap up with the lecture the special relationship between the client and the therapist is known as the therapeutic relationship or a therapeutic alliance it is neither a, a passing 
acquaintance nor a permanent and lasting relationship acha how many of you have watched dear zindagi okay nishtha yes sir yes sir okay so uh, many among you have watched dear zindagi so were they having a very long lasting relationship or were they having a short duration relationship uh the shahrukh khan and alia bhat during this movie where shahrukh khan was the counselor and the alia bhat was the client so they were having a long duration relationship or a very short duration relationship what sort of relationship are we talking about as a psychotherapist and the client they were sharing only that relationship in that movie they were having it for a short period of time or a life time uh, relationship okay that you are going to be my psychotherapist for the lifetime or uh, alia bhat took the psychotherapy short short, 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 short yes yes short time so alia uh, took the psychotherapy for a particular period of time for a particular duration uh, could be one month or two months and after that when she was uh, you know she came out strong and she was very well aware about herself she stopped taking that psychotherapy so that's why it is a uh, it is not a permanent and lasting relationship okay moving forward we are here there are two major components of a therapeutic alliance the first component you can underline this uh, the much i am highlighting the first component is the contractual nature of the relationship in which two willing individuals and the client and the therapist enter into a partnership which aims at helping the client overcome his problems again we are focusing helping the client overcome his problems that is the first component the second component of therapeutic alliance is the limited duration of the therapy okay so it is important the second component that the duration of the therapeutic relationship needs to be short duration should be temporary the alliance lasts until the client becomes able to deal with her or his problems and take control of his life the same thing that happened in years in the uh, she was taking psychotherapy until she was able to come back strong she was able to deal with her problem and take control of her life she was emotionally stable this relationship has several unique properties it is trusting in con confiding relationship yes we are aware of it that a client and a psychotherapist should be sharing a very trustworthy a very confidential relationship they should have a bond where they should share a lot of trust and they should have the confidentiality between each other the high level of trust enables the client to unburden himself with the therapist and confide her psychological and personal problems to the latter yes we need that uh, trust between each other because see you can't go to anyone and can share your personal uh, problems right you need to have that trust you need to have that uh, warmth from the other person or the empathy from the other person before sharing your personal life so yes the client uh, for the client to unburden himself to the therapist and confide his psychological and personal problems there should be a high level of trust the therapist encourages his uh, this by being accepting okay the, uh, the psychotherapist need to be accepting empathetic genuine and warm to the client okay he should sound that he is accepting the client as he is the individual need not to judge the client the therapist conveys by her or his words and behaviors that he or she is not judging the client and will continue to show the same positive feelings towards the client even if the client is rude or confides all the wrong things that he or she may have done or suffering of another but is not able to feel like the other person so the, the motive of the psychotherapist is not to you know make the client guilty of what wrong he has already done okay the motive is to make him realize that he has done wrong and from the next time he is not going to do anything like that okay but we do not have to make him guilty we have to make him realize so intellectual understanding is cold in the sense that the person is unable to feel 
uh, like the other person does not feel sympathy either. On the other hand, empathy is present when one is able to understand the plight of another person and feel like the other person. When we are saying that psychotherapists need to have empathy towards the client, that means that he shouldn't be having sympathy. He, okay, the poor guy, he has suffered a lot. No, this is sympathy. What is empathy? Empathy that if I would have been in his shoes, how I would have reacted. That is empathy. It means understanding things from other person's perspective. That's putting oneself in the other person's shoes. Empathy enriches, enriches the therapeutic relationship and transforms it into a heal, healing relationship, a healthy relationship. Okay, you are clear with it. The therapeutic alliance also requires that the therapist must keep strict confidentiality of the experiences, events, feelings or thoughts disclosed by the client. The therapist must not exploit the trust and the confidence of the client in any way. Finally, it is a professional relationship and must remain so. Okay, A psychotherapist as well as the client should know that it is a professional relationship and they both should adhere to the same. And I think we will be doing this much for today's lecture. And what you can do as a homework, you can do this activity number 5.1. Okay. The classmate or a friend of yours or your uh, favorite character on a TV serial may have recently experienced a negative or a traumatic life uh, event. Example, death of a loved one, breakup of an important friendship or relationship of which you are aware. Try to put yourself in other person's shoes. Try to experience how that person is feeling, what he or she is thinking and try to take her or his perspective of the entire situation and this will help you to understand better how that person is feeling. You can do this exercise, okay, this activity 5.1 and you can give me a short report on Google Classroom, okay. You can submit a short report on this activity 5.1 on Google Classroom. So today we in this lecture you have learned about the therapeutic relationship between a client and his psychologist. We have done the goals of the psychotherapy. We talked about the characteristics of psychotherapy and the purpose of psychotherapy as well as what is psychotherapy. Here we will be concluding the today's lecture. So quickly in the chat box, you can put that uh, what all we have done for today. Like all, what you have learned from today's lecture. Psychotherapy, characteristics, goals, okay. Okay, can uh, you give me the goals of psychotherapy quickly? Goals of psychotherapy. You were right that all those topics that we covered that were right. Okay, therapeutic relationship, Kathy, very nice. Shaitri, facilitate decision making. Very good. Keep it coming. Yes, Ishita, modified habits. Nishtha, necessity of contacting with an experienced psychotherapist. Very nice. Gitika, increasing self-awareness. Yes, Khyati, very good. Lakshita, relationship between client and therapist. Okay, very nice. So, somewhere it is clear that, okay, Shaitri, helping to gain insight. Okay, so uh, less or more, you are very well clear with the goals, with the characteristics and the psychotherapeutic relationship. Okay, that's perfect. So now let's wrap off the class. We can, okay, Kathy changing thinking patterns. Very nice. Perfect. So you can uh, do the activity 5.1 from your NCRT and you can submit a short report related to that on the Google Classroom so okay any other issues you all are facing in any other chapter that we have already completed okay so if you have any issue you can ping me up on whatsapp you can share your problem okay and there we can solve it out so that's all for the class today have a nice day and have a positive day enjoy with your family stay home and stay safe Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Ma welcome, students. Thank you, welcome.